chef and owner at Cotty Waffle Canning Company, the, me and my partner, Kimberly. Uh, today we're making blueberry jam. Uh, so we're here at Elizabeth White's house in White Bog. We're gonna be, uh, start out over here. We have kind of a layout of all of our ingredients and equipment. So obviously, number one, we have blueberries. They're fresh local Jersey blueberries. And other main ingredients, we have pectin. This is Dutch Gel Light. It's a low sugar pectin. Um, so all of our jams and jellies are very low to no sugar. And then a little tiny bit of sugar to season it up towards the end. So one of the first things that we're gonna do is we have our equipment layout here. We have half pint, eight ounce jars, lids, rings for them. One little guy, which we're gonna get to in just a bit. And then for equipment, we have a small and a large ladle, candy tongs, pair of regular tongs, spatula, little potato masher, candy ladle, and then a pitcher for pouring. So one of the first things we're gonna start out with this little guy's gonna go in the refrigerator. He's gonna be used later on to test the gel and keeping it cold will greatly reduce the time of that. So I got most of the blueberries already cleaned here. We're gonna go through and just kind of clean up the last of them. Now, when you're making jam and jelly, the berries don't need to be perfect. And it's actually one of the reasons why people started doing that when you have fruit like this. You might not necessarily wanna eat, but it's all gonna get cooked down. So it's gonna turn out beautiful and perfect anyway. So these are nice and clean. You want to go through and make sure there's no stems in there, uh, any really small green berries or anything like that, but Jersey blueberries at the peak of season, so no worries. We're going to add these into here, and then we can the door pop. So we have a relatively smaller stock pot here. We're going to load in our blueberries, and we're going to turn this on to uh, like medium-high heat. Now, blueberries right off the bat are going to start dropping liquid, but with the heat, you kind of want to mash them up a little bit, and that's just going to help the process along. Again, blueberries being quite large, you want to break them down a little bit. Now, you can go through and food mill this later on if you like. We're going to leave it whole. Kind of nice and chunky, kind of makes it feel like you're eating more fresh fruit rather than jam and jelly. So, while that's cooking, so here, put a lid on this. We have our jars here, which are going to need to be sanitized before we actually fill them. So, over here, I have a pot already loaded up with the rings, as well as the jars. Now, these have been steaming already for a little bit. We're gonna let them go just a little bit longer. I'm gonna steam them for about 15 minutes. And it is kind of a double duty because when we go to seal these, we are gonna be sanitizing everything again in the sealing process, but in this day and age, why not be a little on the safe side? So while this is cooking here, I do have a little bit in the back that's already cooked. It's gonna save us a little bit of time. Talk about some of the equipment here. These are basically going to be used for the filling process here, as well as this spatula to scrape everything out. This little one is going to be used to skim the film off of the uh, top of the blueberries that are going to come up as it heats up. So we get this going here a little bit, and that's where it's going to switch these pots around. So as you can see here in this pot, it's already been cooked down. Nice, bright, kind of purple-blue color. Relatively consistent, but still nice and chunky. Now, once this comes up to a simmer is when we're gonna add the pectin. I mentioned earlier about the low-sugar pectin. There's two different types that you can get. Dutch gel, and Dutch Gel Light are the two major brands. The, or same brand, I guess. Uh, the Dutch Gel Light sets up with little or no sugar. So you can use honey, you can use various, uh, um, artificial sweeteners, if you like, sort of like stevia or something like that. We use honey, granulated sugar, pretty much the only two that we're looking at. So, 
while this is heating up here, and we're starting to get a little bit on the warm side, we're going to add our pectin in before this actually comes up to a simmer. So now the pectin is going to have to simmer for about a minute for it to actually uh, get its thickening properties. And we're going to stir this in with our potato masher. Uh, you can use a whisk as well, but you're already making a lot of stuff dirty, so I just keep, uh, keep the amount of dirty utensils down to the minimum. You want to make sure this gets stirred in very, very thoroughly, or else you're going to end up with little clumps of kind of hard and pectin in the jam. So I'm going to use this almost like a whisk, kind of get everything nice and fully incorporated. Uh, if you get a little bit sticking to the sides, feel free to give it a wipe down. Sides clean. So now as this comes up to a boil, you're going to start to see a foam that will kind of start to rise up on it. That is just a coagulating proteins. Can be left in there, but it's not necessarily the greatest. It doesn't look as good and they look much cleaner taste and mouth feel without that foam. So we're going to let that come up to a boil and then we'll skip it off in time. We're going to get our jars out of here and put those off to the side until we're ready for them. So this is a two-level steamer, so this actually works out quite nice. We have the lids in the small one, and then in here we have the jars. So these we're going to pull out, I'm just going to let them sit off to the side here for now. Right now they do have a little bit of liquid in there from the steaming process, but they're very, very hot, so they're going to dry up really, really quick. Simmer, you can start to see some of the foam starting to come up in the sides here. And it's going to take another minute or two. Pull this one off and send this here. that pot back up to a boil because that's actually what we're going to be using to seal the jars in as well. So as this is coming up to a simmer you are going to want to stir it very very often because as it thickens it will have a tendency to burn on the bottom. And obviously, you don't want to do that. And again, always try to keep this size as clean as possible because they will get a little crusty on there from your teeth. Handy. 
So with this recipe, we're using about, it's uh, two kilograms of blueberries. So it's about four pounds or so, about four and a half. The pectin is 156 grams, and the sugar is about 20 grams. Now, most jams and jellies use about a 50-50 ratio between sugar and fruit. So in this recipe, technically, we would need four key, or two kilos of blueberries to about two kilos of sugar, which is bowl, probably about this bowl about half full. So as you can see, the amount that we're actually going to be putting in there is much, much less. So it's really just going to taste as close to the fruit as possible. The pectin does have citric acid added into it, which helps with the uh, thickening. That is also going to add acidity, so that's what the sugar is for. Just kind of balance that out a little bit. So, we're at the point now, I'm going to start skimming this off a little bit. So now we go to skin. The mixing's help. <laughs> it work nicely. And we're just gonna get this foam as it comes up. You'll see the little airy bubbles. And again, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just it's gonna give you a much nicer product if it's not there. You do lose a little bit of volume, but ultimately it's really not a whole lot. Also, if you are making larger batches, it probably will not actually come up to a full simmer. Uh, the liquid is very viscous, so as it, the bubbles have trouble getting up to the surface. You'll kind of see it rise and fall rather than actually like have a bunch of small bubbles. Let me make this another stir. see already it's starting to hold its shape a little bit more when it's very very hot it's always going to be kind of in a liquid form it's as it gets to room temperature or in the refrigeration even that it'll actually fully set up we always joke around when we're doing markets this time of year all of our jellies look like liquid because it's 100 degrees outside but as soon as you get home and get in this in AC around 70 degrees they become much more firm A little bit longer, we're going to do one more skim and then we'll start filling the jars. Now, the jar that I put in the refrigerator here, this guy here, we're going to put just a very tiny bit in the bottom of him and then put him back in there to see how it sets up before you put it in the jars. Uh, nothing is more aggravating when you make a batch of jam or jelly, it's not fully set, you have it in the jars and then the first jar you open you realize it's very liquidy make the decision on having to open up all the jars again, add more pectin and refill them. It's just better to take your time and just make sure it's right before it goes in the jar the first time. What well, I've learned from experience. What happens in the jar and then it patches and jam and jam. So we're gonna get one more skim off of this. And as you can see now it's actually really starting to bubble. So very, very close. Once we got about like maybe another minute on that or so, and then we're going to start filling the jars. So at this time, we're gonna make sure that our pot here is up to a nice boil in the back. There it is. And that's going to be where we're going to seal that. Okay. You stir here and we're gonna get these in the jar. So now, that's the set on this. We're going to take that small jar and our small ladle. Doesn't need to be a lot, just a little bit, just to make sure that's going to be firm enough. Put this in there and I don't know, 10 minutes or so until it'll cool down. You can put it in the freezer too for a minute or so to help kind of like supercharge how fast it is. 
But basically what you're looking for is this. Should be able to hold it upside down on its side and it's not gonna go anywhere. And that's gonna give you this kind of nice jam consistency. So, we have our pitcher here. I'm actually gonna pour over to this side so we don't get blueberry splatter all over the window. It is good to have towels. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the handles are a little hot. So I'm gonna pour this off. When you're pouring, pour away from you. You are gonna make a little bit of a mess. Just make sure that you clean it up when you're done. And then, so you have this guy, I'm just gonna get the last of this out of here. Okay. Here for right now. Here, so do this here, it's still a little warm. Try not to get blueberry splatter everywhere. I'm sure this house has probably seen a good amount of it. <laughs> so now for the filling, on these jars you see it has this little lip right here. We want to go as close to the top of that lip as possible without going over. Uh, one of the issues that you have in the sealing process is the jars do uh, might have a tendency to boil over if they're too high. And what I usually do is I'll go through and fill the jars for the most part, and then afterwards kind of go back through again and kind of level them out with a smaller spoon because as you can see, some of them might be a little bit higher, some of them are going to be a touch lower. So one of the great things about these recipes is you don't even have to actually necessarily seal it. You could put these into plastic containers and put them in a freezer and just pull them out as you need. Sealed in the jar, they'll last about 18 months out of refrigeration. Once they're open, having no preservatives, eh, about a month, month and a half or so. Um, never really had much of it sit in our refrigerator long enough to go bad. So we do have a little bit left over. I actually have some extra jars steaming for that cake, but we're just going to run with these for now. So after the filler, we're just going to take a damp cloth and clean the lids. Now careful, these are going to be a little bit on the warmer side at this point in time. So you can wear gloves if you want. Just keep your hands moving fast and you'll be fine. So all these are looking okay as far as level wise goes, but I am going to do a little bit of leveling out here before we actually put them into jar or into the uh, bath. And that guy there. bit from him. And give it to Paul here. Okay, so now we have our lids. Put these on. As I said before, these are all sanitized. Then you're pouring hot jam into it. And then it's going to go back into a steam pot for another about 12 minutes or so. So when you're doing the lids, you want to put the lid on pretty tight and then just take it back a half a turn, or not half a turn, like a quarter turn. And so that's just going to allow the air to escape as they heat, which is basically going to hermetically seal the jars. Then you're going 
to go into the steamer pot. So now these are going to go in here and we're going to set a timer for 12 minutes. Now if you're making larger batches and it's actually a little bit cooler when it's going in here, you can do it up to like 13 or 14 minutes. Um, but when they're hot in the jar, 12 minutes should be just fine. Put those in there. A little wipe up of our jam splatters. And then through the magic of television, we have some here. We're already done. So when these are done, you want to let them sit with the lid off for a few minutes, about four or five minutes or so. But you can hear them already starting to pop as we open it up, which is a very, very good sign. Put this up. And always recommend never doing this with sandals because you will get a lot of hot water dripped all over your feet. And that is very, very good sign. Okay. So we're going to pull these out. Now, yeah, it looks like they pretty much have all sealed. They can take quite a long time, sometimes up to six hours. It really depends on the difference in temperature. If you're working in an environment that's going to be hotter, they're going to take longer to cool down, and for the pressure to equalize, it's going to take a little bit longer. It's actually nice and cool in here today, which is very, very nice. Um, it also makes it great for sealing the jars, because it looks like they have pretty much all sealed, except for one, which again, sometimes can take several hours for them. I'm just going to go through and dry them off. And as you can tell, when they're sealed, They sound like that. When they're not sealed, they sound like that. I have a feeling this one's going to seal. If it doesn't seal, you can take the lid off, re-wipe the wing, re-wipe the ring, sorry, and then put the lid back on, reseal it. Go through the same process, and it should turn out just fine. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, and I uh, hope to hear from you soon.